What's up, everyone? Today, we're taking a look at the issue, why did America enter World War I? And keep in mind, after initial neutrality in World War I, the nation is going to enter the conflict. So how does this happen? June 1914, World War I began over in Europe, and this transformation is going to be a process. Wilson, at the beginning of the war, pledges U.S. neutrality. We want to stay the heck out of this thing over in Europe, but neutrality is going to prove difficult, and America will eventually enter the war in April of 1917. Now, another important idea is this. Wilson will depart from the U.S. foreign policy tradition of non-involvement in European affairs. Remember, ever since George Washington and the Napoleonic Wars, we've been trying to avoid all that drama in Europe. And this time, we're not going to be successful. We're going to get up in the mix. When the war begins, public opinion in the United States is mixed. You know, England and America had a cultural and historical connection. We had a linguistic connection, we had economic connection, and a shared history, and so a lot of people favored or, you know, at least sympathized with the Allied cause. But don't forget, there are a lot of Germans Germans. in America. A lot of German immigrants had, had come into the United States during the 19th century. They were the second biggest group next to the Irish at some point. And so there's a lot of kind of sympathy with the German cause. The Germans. There also was a lots of anti-German sentiment in the United States. You know, there were reports of German atrocities. They had invaded neutral Belgium. And there was a lot of kind of anger about the actions of Germany. You know, they had an autocratic government. They were not a democratic government. And as a result, there was this anti-German sentiment in the U.S., Fueling this, of course, was propaganda, a lot of it coming out of England, but also in the United States, where the Germans are portrayed as barbarians and called derogatory names like the Huns. So all of this kind of put the sympathy in the Allied war camp in the United States. However, the big drama is going to happen over violations of U.S. neutrality. And what ends up happening is trouble arose when the U.S. tried to preserve neutral trading rights. England actually blockaded, the powerful British Navy blockaded Germany, and they wanted to keep supplies from reaching their enemy. This naval blockade seized American ships, and many people in the United States were angered over the violations of this principle of freedom of the sea. American ships were supposed to be able to travel the sea freely, and this was not happening. Well, things get even more tense when... I hit. You have sunk my battleship. Germany responded with a new weapon of war, U-boats. There starts to become consistent violations of U.S. neutrality, and this created problems for the United States. All of that area you see on the map was declared a war zone by Germany, and they're using their U-boats to sink any ships trying to trade with England. So Germany is going to respond with this new weapon, the submarine, the U-boat, to retaliate against the British blockade. Now the big moment comes with the Lusitania. This is a British passenger ship and the Lusitania was sailing one day right off the coast of Ireland when it comes under attack by German U-boats. You can see right there on the map. The sinking of the Lusitania leads to the killing of 1,198 individuals Um, and this is very much dramatized in paintings and portraits of the time. Amongst the dead are 128 Americans. So there's a huge outrage in the United States and public sentiment goes even further anti-German. This is reinforced in propaganda at the time, reinforcing these negative views of Germany, as you can see in this British propaganda piece. Now, fun fact or interesting to note, the Lusitania was actually carrying war munitions in its cargo secretly. So for Germany, this justified partially their actions. So it's not as simple as big bad Germany. You know, Germany sinking these ships for reasons, but it's leading to the death of innocent people. Now, what happens after this? Obviously, America is mad, and as a result, Wilson... I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! responded with a forceful diplomatic message threatening Germany and threatening to 
cut off diplomatic relations. And you can see by the political cartoon, this will not be the first or the last time this type of thing will happen. Germany does not want a war with the United States. You know, they got their hands full already with the Allies. So there is a temporary pause in German U-boat attacks. They promise we will not sink any more ships without warning. Well, that kind of ends when a French ship, the Sussex, is sailing and the German U-boats fire away. hitting the ship and killing over 50 individuals. No Americans are killed during this attack, but once again, American public opinion turns firmly anti-German. President Wilson threatens to cut off diplomatic relations again, which is a step before war. Germany does not want a war with the United States, so they end up saying sorry with a little thing called the Sussex Pledge. Is it too late now to say sorry? Cause I'm and in this pledge, they promise to refrain from targeting passenger ships. Merchant ships, ships with kind of possible war goods on them, would only be attacked if it could be proven that weapons were in fact present and provisions would be made for the safety of passengers and crew. So they pledge that they won't be doing this unrestricted submarine warfare any longer. Now with all this violations of US neutrality taking place, Something you also need to keep in mind is follow the money. So although the United States is officially neutral, the U.S. economy was closely linked to the Allies. Trade with England and France skyrocketed. You can actually see that on the chart right there. Our trade with Germany is going to pretty much evaporate. And the reason for this is Br the British blockade kept U.S. goods out of Germany. England had a powerful navy and it was very effective at keeping Germany out of this trade arrangements. Also going on is American banks loaned billions of dollars to the Allied war effort. So in effect, the U.S. wasn't neutral when it came to who got the money during the war because mainly it was the Allied powers. In early 1917, Germany returned to unrestricted submarine warfare. They're going to sink all ships. And they knew this would get the U.S. into the war, but they thought they could win the war in Europe before America would actually enter the war. And their main goal, Germany's main goal, was to keep supplies from getting to the Allies, France and England. And right after this moment of unrestricted submarine warfare, Wilson breaks off diplomatic relations with the German government. Enter Mexico. Another event happens called the Zimmerman Telegram, and this is really kind of the overt act, Germany really kind of sticking it to the United States, when in March of 1917, England intercepted a German proposal from Foreign Minister Arthur Zimmerman to Mexico. It was encoded, England breaks the code, and what this thing says is the following. Viva Mexico! Viva! Viva America! In the Zimmerman telegram, it is a proposed alliance between Germany and Mexico. And what Germany basically says is, hey, join us, Mexico, and we would help you recover your lost territory highlighted in the light green. We're talking Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona, land that was taken from Mexico way back during the Mexican-American War in 1846 to 1848. Now, this proposal kind of causes a huge anger in the United States. A couple days later, five more U.S. ships are sunk by Germany. And with the Zimmerman telegram, we are one step closer to war, which leads us to April of 1917. Wilson asked Congress to declare war against Germany. And he does so, and I like to think of him just kind of shouting this out in Congress. But they'll never take he didn't actually say that, but he did say, we must go to war. 
the world must be made safe for democracy. And part of the thing that happens here is the U.S. goes to war in response to Woodrow Wilson's call for the defense of humanitarian and democratic principles. Wilson is going to break from tradition of avoiding European conflicts, and he is very much interested in being involved in the peace treaty process which would end the war. He wants a role in the post-war settlement. He wants to see a world based upon these principles of democracy, self-determination, and so on. So Wilson is very much an idealist. These are the things he's claiming World War I is going to be all about. But keep in mind, these are really the reasons that get us in this war to begin with. Look. I got enemies, got a lot of enemies, got a lot of people trying to drain me of my energy. German U-boat attacks on neutral ships, the Zimmerman telegram, Wilson's desire to be involved in the peace process, and of course the economic connection to the Allied war effort. All of these things contribute to American entry into World War I. That's going to do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, Make sure you do the thing and you post them. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe and click like. Peace.